Hi and welcome to tutorial 4. Uh, in the previous tutorial, we developed a simple uh, web application. We uh, wrote a simple servlet and we executed the servlet's uh, do get method. We also understood uh, how Tomcat interacts with the web application to identify what uh, method of what servlet needs to run. Uh, we did all the configurations in our previous tutorial using um, annotations. Uh, we used a simple uh, web servlet annotation and we mentioned what is the URL pattern that the servlet catches. Uh, there's actually another way in which we can um, configure servlets. Uh, in fact, before uh, annotation support was introduced in Java, uh, the only way to configure the servlet was using the XML. So uh, that's another thing that we're going to have a look at. Uh, we'll learn how to um, do the same thing, which is uh, create a simple web servlet, but uh, this time using uh, you know, XML configuration. So uh, the XML that we're going to configure is in the WebINF folder. Um, the name of the XML is web.xml. Uh, web.xml is uh, normally called as the deployment descriptor in a web application. So uh, what that means is um, the XML contains the information which is required for uh, deploying the application as and for uh, running the application. So uh, let's open up the project that we have already created. You can open up the deployment descriptor. I have the source here. Again, let me remove the welcome file list. Don't need that for now. Okay, so right now our deployment descriptor contains nothing uh, except for the uh, display name and of course um, you know the XML header. So the only only value we have in the deployment descriptor is you know um, the web app node and uh, we have the display name. So all the other configuration are going to go in this space. It's going to be inside this web app node. So um, we're going to create another servlet and uh, we're going to put the configuration here at this time. So um, what we'll do is we'll go to the Java resources source in the same package I'll create a new servlet. I'm going to create a class this time. So I'll call this the XML servlet and this will extend HTTP servlet. This is the one. And it'll not have any main methods and inherit the abstract methods. say finish okay so here's our uh, bare bones servlet class which really doesn't do anything um, what we'll do is we'll copy the same do get from our uh, previous class and we'll paste it here so um, it you know it makes sure um, You've got all the imports. It automatically does the import. If not, just make sure you add them up. Okay, so now we have the do get here, but we need to tell uh, the web application that this has to be run upon calling a particular URL. Earlier, we used to do that by mentioning the deployment descriptor here, but we're not going to do that here. We are going to use the web.xml and we're going to mention the deployment. Uh, descriptor related information over here. So, uh, in order to you know mention that this is the servlet that gets executed, first I need to give the servlet a name. So, um, I'll create the servlet node. And in the servlet node, I will have a node called servlet name which tells what the name of the servlet is. this 
कंडीशन में सब लेट ओके सो दिस नेम आई नीड टू मेंशन व्हाट क्लास is being uh, called when you you know access the servlet so the class that we are going to call is xml servlet dot java so i'll create node called servlet class here and i'll give this class name of course with the package name okay so we have defined a servlet here we have uh, we have mentioned that we want xml servlet class to be a servlet and we have given it a name you can give it any uh, name here this is uh, you know you want to make it uh, uh, explanatory so that you know you get to know what that servlet does but uh, there are actually no rules that this has to be same as the class name it can be anything um the reason why we give a servlet name here is so that um we are also going to map this servlet to a particular url so that's the that's the second part of the annotations that we did earlier uh, we had a property of the annotations called url pattern so we're going to give a url pattern that uh, maps to this servlet so that uh, whenever you know an access http access is made for that url pattern the servlet gets executed so uh, let's go ahead and define that url uh, pattern here so i'm going to create another node call servlet mapping should be in lower case so uh, what servlet mapping does is it takes one of the servlets that you have defined here and it maps it to a particular url pattern so uh, let me do that let me just say servlet name actually in fact i can copy the same line here so uh, what we saying is this servlet xml servlet has to be mapped to this url pattern call that slash xml servlet path i'm just going to add a path so that uh, you know not not everything is the same name you might get confused so uh, yeah that that does it so i have uh, have a servlet node which says okay this is the name of my servlet and this is the class of my servlet and then we have another node called servlet mapping which says this is the name of the servlet and then this is the url mapping i'm going to save this i'm going to save this class and we are all set because we can execute this now but uh, in order to see something happening let me uh, let me create a simple system out let's say xml servlet call so when we check the console we'll know that um, this has executed so uh, now i can go ahead and uh, right click run as run on server come get starts it's going to call this xml servlet path then it says xml servlet call which means that the do get method has executed so uh, what's happening here is very similar to what uh, we did in our earlier uh, tutorial instead of having an annotation here we moved the configuration to the web.xml uh, file and uh, you know uh, tomcat reads this file also to get the information about what servlet to run uh, when a particular url is accessed and that's how it got to know that this has to run and then it is called this particular servlet 
uh, you know if you compare this configuration you know this uh, servlet and servlet mapping configuration if you compare it with our previous annotation configuration you can see that this is actually more you have uh, you have more things to type and more stuff to do when compared to a single line of annotation configuration so uh, the question you would ask is why would i need to do that i think annotation is a is a much simpler way to do this um there are two reasons why we need to know how to do this one is uh, of course as i mentioned before uh, annotation support started only from java version 5 uh, before that and of course sometime after that also people were uh, using the xml configuration uh, a lot of people still use xml configuration so uh, to access i mean to uh, try to understand code which was written earlier we need to know how uh, to configure this in an xml based format uh, the second reason why you would want to uh, learn and uh, in fact even use this kind of uh, configuration is the annotation configuration is tied to the class itself say I make an annotation configuration here and I want to change it I will have to compile this class and I'll have to deploy it again whereas in the case of an XML configuration I just have to make the change to the XML and then of course restart Tomcat and then the changes are going to take effect I don't have to change the code and I don't have to recompile and redeploy uh, we do however have to restart Tomcat because Tomcat looks at the web.xml when it starts up say there are five applications deployed in the tomcats uh, tomcat folder it's going to look at the web.xml of all those five applications and uh, make a note of the configurations so uh, once tomcat has started if you change web.xml it's not going to take effect so whenever you make changes to this file you will have to restart tomcat but uh, that's all that you have to do you don't have to compile and uh, build um, the reason why you want to use annotations instead of uh, web.xml configuration is of course it's less verbose you don't have to type a lot and uh, the beauty of annotations is that it carries a lot of meaning uh, depending on where the annotation is written see in this case I need to mention what class it is what is the package and what is the path in the case of annotations, since I'm writing it inside the Java class I don't have to mention what class I'm referring to because it's implicit so uh, that's that's one advantage of using annotations it's less verbose and uh, it's much more easier to understand I look at a class and I can know what are the configurations instead of referring to two different files so uh, again this is one more thing that uh, you should be knowing and uh, you know you can um, choose either of these options when you are developing your own servlets